Welcome to this B1 Print and Delivery e-learning session on Mass Delivery and specifically in this session uh, the configuration of Mass Delivery. If you're looking for Mass Delivery usage, there's a separate e-learning session on that. So here I'm Business One on the Mass Delivery screen, which you of course can get from sales, purchase and so on. And that's actually the first little thing uh, in configuration. If you, for some reason, want to hide some of these areas using the form settings um, and you end up with master delivery in them anyway but, uh, you can actually go into the b1 print delivery base configuration here and say where should master delivery be shown uh, under the different options so if you are annoyed by it being there uh, without you have using that uh, area you can turn them off here in the same manner, there is a few settings, uh, not too much about this uh, area, but uh, we will take this screen by itself in another session. So, mass delivery out of the box is very easy to use, and uh, that is covered in the usage session. But let's talk about uh, going in and configuring it. So, behind every uh, entry you have in this list, there's a configuration behind the scenes. And that is able to be accessed using the right click and mass delivery configuration. So here's the configuration. It has a code behind the scenes. That's just what you select here. If you look at the lower left corner, it's DP099 uh, and a name. There's a remarks field, so you can just comment what uh, this is all about and there is the user field. Uh, user fields can be used so only certain users can select this configuration so it could be that only uh, the accounting uh, sections would be allowed to use uh, the master delivery with AI invoices but others could use the sales orders for example. And it's just like any other user system in in B1 app, where you can include or exclude users, and you can just press the button to either do it by users or by user groups. Next up, we have uh, the type, and you can see there's a lot of different types. Um, we won't cover three of these types in this session uh, account balance, internal, and custom. They have separate sessions uh, because they are a bit uh, different. Technically, account balance is not, but uh, we, we will go into it when we talk about account balance in general. Internal and custom have its own session. But let's uh, look at the AI invoice. So what it does here, it will tell you more or less what SQL it will run. Um, and when I say more or less, it's because you can manipulate the SQL and there's a few other where conditions we put on. If you actually are interested in what the SQL is in final, the best way of doing that is to go into the delivery screen and as a super user right click and say copy SQL used to produce this view. If we take a notepad, we can actually see the SQL and as I mentioned it's sort of, so you can see it's the same select up here, but there's a where condition that takes care of the different fields and uh, filters here. So that's the, the best way of figuring out if you have a mass delivery, it doesn't show what you expected, right click and get the SQL and then you can uh, go from there on why things are not the way it is. Next up we have the where condition and this is where you can go in and customize things. So that could for example be that uh, you have EDI based customers where you actually never should send uh, things. So you can go in and write SQL uh, in this case against OINV. Uh, so we could say where you should send. So if you had a combo box that had should send yes or no, and it could be where should send equals Y as an example. Um, in here you can also use SQL variables, meaning you can use the 
percentage zero, percentage one, as you know it from query generator. So you could actually ask about uh, different uh, options. We won't go into too much detail there, but uh, you could do it if you want to. In the same manner, uh, in additional columns can also uh, manipulate the SQL because if we run it here and we have a look, you can see there's the document number, posting date, due date, BP code, BP name, and the total. But you might want to have more fields here that could, example, it could be uh, that you want, for example, the customer reference number. So we write test in here. Uh, and have that in the system. So if you know the number, the name of it, it's this case, it's nomad card. You could go in and simply say nomad card and let's take one more field. Let's take remarks. And so let's take the remarks, which is called comments. We could simply add uh, more in here. Please uh, check out exactly how it is because it's not a direct SQL language as such, but it is possible to do uh, various things here. And you can go in and format them because Nomad card is probably not what the customer would see it as, but ref num number, for example, and remarks. And doing it like that, if we run this again, you will see that there are exactly multiple columns that can help you along. Very good for user-defined fields, very good for specific fields that will help the use of this choose which columns uh, there should be. You can also specify that uh, no matter what, the SQL should max give some, uh, a, a certain number of things back. That is mostly done uh, for SMTP servers that have limited how much you can send at the time. So for example, if I write, five here and run it will no matter what only give me five back at the time then run it run again and, and so on zero just means everything you can also go in and uh, order by condition uh, meaning you can go in and order by specific fields instead of just uh, sorting here uh, it could be a default so you'd simply write uh, let's say uh, remarks or comments as it's called and the values in here oh I wrote it wrong I need to write my own order by this and we now have all the ones that didn't have a comment and then all the ones that have a comment based on how the text is. Finally, for this, you can ignore SQL distinct, uh, meaning we have a distinct in. Uh, you can do joins here and so on. Uh, very, very uh, rare that you need to do it, but in uh, more advanced cases, you might want to get rid of the SQL distinct. Then we have if it's active or not and if it should be shown as an option in mass delivery. So if I turn this off and go to mass delivery again, that was not mass delivery. Let's take the right screen. We simply don't have the option for the AI invoice here. And why would we do this? This would be done if you have a special master delivery configuration that you only want to use in the schedule window but not the master delivery window. The final option we have is allow you, the user to select different report configuration when running master delivery. So if I open this again now that we have it you can see if I choose AI invoice I cannot choose a specific report configuration. It will be using the, report, the BP selection system, which again is also a separate e-learning video if need be. And uh, But if I turn this on and open Master Lurie again, 
it will default to BP selection, but I can actually go in and override with the two, in my case, uh, report configurations I have that are both sales invoices. Um, so that could be that on the fly, you want the, the user to run one or the other, or just run via the report selection system. And as I mentioned here, you can run it by schedule. Works exactly in the same way uh, as this, just that uh, it's the schedule part, which we'll cover in another session. Again, we will come back to ma mass delivery when it comes to internal and uh, and custom deliveries. But for now, thank you for attending this session, and I hope it was beneficial. <laughs>